Hi everybody. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be having a look around B&Q's garden centre. Uh, I did a Home Bargains garden centre um, walk around recently and it was very well received. Um, so I thought I'd continue um, a bit of a mini series um, of garden centres. I'm going to focus on national garden centres, so chains. Um, where people should hopefully have one um, to uh, you know quite near to them, so it's relevant. And B and Q, um, people have mixed opinions on B and Q for its plants, uh, but it is, I believe, Britain's biggest garden centre with over 300 locations all across the UK. So, um, you know, I think what's key to any garden centre is to buy plants soon after they arrive. Uh, and that way, you know, they're in, you know, near perfect condition. And you, as the um, new keeper of the, the plant, uh, will obviously look after it um, the best way you can. At the end of this video, I will show you uh, what's looking good in my garden at home. Um, at the moment, obviously things change through the, through the year, so I'll keep people updated on how that's looking. If you do enjoy this content, please do like and subscribe. I'm currently at about 825 or so subscribers. So trying to get to a thousand, um, that's a, a real big milestone for, for YouTube. So yeah, if you do enjoy it, please do like and subscribe. Without further ado, let's head in. I'm here quite late in the evening and they are they have closed that door for some reason. Don't know why they always do that shut that door first they brought all the plants in as well by the looks of it usually out here is completely um blocked really with plants but they've moved them inside here as you can see i'm going to be focusing on the um exotic looking plants obviously they sell all manner of plants here but uh, we'll stick to the exotics otherwise we'll be here all day they do, they do close in an hour Really nice um, houseplant section at B&Q. This has grown really big since, well, probably since COVID actually. Some nice palm trees. I'm... So this is the butterfly palm. the label yes however it is 46 pounds so it's not cheap I do have some miniature ones here £7.50, it's a parlour palm this time. This is the Shamadora Elegans. It's a bit more my budget. But I do think generally, when most people buy a house plant, they're bringing it home to die. These aren't really meant for most people's houses. People overwater them, underwater them, put them in extra radiators, um, or they get attacked by um, flies or bugs. However, some people seem to have a gift for it, just not me. So we'll leave those as they are. head this way if anyone's ever bought um, this gazebo thing they've had it for a number of years now probably five or six years I've always wondered if it would be any good over time because it's got a fabric roof which does seem like it might rip 
um, or come off in, in certainly in the winter. But um, if anyone has bought one of those or knows anyone who has, please leave a comment to let me know if it has stood the test of time. So heading out now, there's all the bedding plants, sort of under cover here. And then we'll just go up and down each row, I think, make sure we capture everything. Topiary's not really up my street anymore. I was into it once, but uh, not so keen now. There are some fatsias here. I almost said nice fatsias, but they're not really. There's um, quite a bit of damage. I think they've caught the frost. They will recover. They'll be fine to buy. Let's see how much they're asking. £22. It's a reasonable price. I'd probably try and get a slightly younger one, which was cheaper if it was me. Is this... Um, this red robin, no, bay bush. Don't know much about that, but it does look quite interesting. It's very narrow, got a very narrow form, which is uh, quite good. Because when you do buy a lot of plants, they just bulk out and go go sideways, um, take up so much space. They've got some bamboos. Now these are normally philostachics. Or something like that. Uh, golden bamboo, which is Philistax. Uh, I'll let you read that. I can't say it. Philostachys aurea, I reckon. Uh, and that is a spreading bamboo. So if you buy that, keep it in a big pot. If you do that, you've got to feed it well. If you do want to plant it out, then you will need to put a root barrier in or um, I've done a video on a completely free method for protecting bamboo from spreading which um, if you look at my the videos on my channel you will find. They've also got this black bamboo at £58 so a bit different you can see the, the black stems as opposed to the green on the, um, the philostachics. So this one is Philostachics nigra. But that is what they have. Oh, I can also see a palm tree. It looks like a Canary Island date palm. Let's take this out. Let's have a look at this. <coughs> yep, this is the Phoenix canariensis. They're in Canary Island date palm. And it's a nice enough little plant. Very nice. 17 quid. Goodness me. These, I mean, a few years ago, that would have been less than a fiver. Uh, I expected it to be maybe 10 quid today. Um, 17 pounds. Goodness me. This is how they look. Um, you know, it's, I think they're selling you a dream here because it's uh it's got a long way um to get to there and certainly this specific plant here in blackburn we'll never get to that unfortunately but nice enough as a palm on a patio maybe in a nice pot and then brought in uh, brought undercover for the winter here's some more fatsias um that one's quite a long one isn't it led down there uh, and this one's only nine pounds. Goodness me. It's actually, no wonder it's fallen over in this tiny little pot. Let's, let's go and take in, plonk it next to that um, one that was, how much was it, 17? I've forgotten, 22. Okay, so this doesn't make any sense at all, does it? You can have this nice long one in a tiny pot for seven for nine pounds. Well, that 
little one with some damage for 22. So I'd definitely go for the, the laid back one. And um, <clears throat> turned out to be good advice of mine to uh, try and find a cheaper one. Some nice grasses along here. Um, and conifer trees, um, certain types of conifer trees I think look really good in a an exotic garden. Goodness me, that's expensive. Four pounds just for an empty pot. Well, you get a bit of soil in there, but seems a tad expensive. Here we have some nice formiums. So there's two types here by the looks of it. This one has uh, some nice pink stripes. And this is called Formium Down Under Dreams Jack. No, sorry, Mix. Completely misread that. It's £17. Again, seems a little bit on the expensive side. Next to it is... Down Under Dreams mix. So I think mix means could be anything really. So pointless name. These are very tactile plants. These are nine pounds. Just make you wanna, make people wanna touch them. Some smaller bamboo here. Now I think this bamboo is not a runner, which is good news for most people. So this is well, it doesn't say, unfortunately. No, oh yeah, Fargesia uh, Rufu, odd name, but any Fargesia bamboo is a running bamboo. Sorry, is a, the opposite of that. It's a clumping bamboo, so it won't run. It will spread very slowly, but it won't spread meters at a time and pop up in neighbours' gardens. And we've got some cordial lines down here, some more formiums as well. So we've got some Torbay Dazzlers. Now these aren't as hardy as a normal green cordial line, Australis. And these ones, uh, <laughs> in fact this still has a formium, oh no, cordial line down under Dreams mix. Okay, I've no, no idea what this Down Under Dreams thing is, but I think they've basically said, print one label and stick it on anything, because um, that's a Torbay Palm, Torbay Dazzler, which is a variegated cordline Australis. They also have some red ones, again, not as hardy as the green cordlines. These are £4.50, which isn't bad. That's a decent plant, and then we'll have a decent root ball in there, I imagine, as well. You can see them coming out there at the bottom. As well as that, is this the same? Oh, it's the same. I thought that was going to be cheaper. The pot looks smaller, but it's the same. Uh, more random formiums. Couldn't tell you what they are because it just says. Um, Oh no, I could, I could. They've, they've put a proper label on this one. Sundowner. Formium Sundowner. Interesting that it doesn't look like the picture, particularly. I suppose it has, some leaves have got, just on their edge, a, a pink stripe. Then on the other side, we just have some um, more conifer type plants and box as well. Bit of colour down here. Some are these rhododendrons. Let's have a look. Beautiful. Um, oh it's an azalea. It's an azalea and it flowers May to June. And that's not bad considering we're still in April. May to June, so two months. Not enough, not, not, not long enough for me. I like plants that flower. 
for months on end. Now this is a Calisteman Splendens. It flowers in late spring, but it doesn't say how long that lasts. But again, really tactile flower that, which is nice. We'll pass on by onto the next aisle. Now, can't see anything particularly of interest down here at the moment. Oh, this is Red Robin. This is what I thought I might have seen before. So I'm intrigued by this plant. This is seven pounds. I think they make quite a nice, quite an interesting shrub. Not, not particularly exotic, but I think it could still fit in the um, the tropical style garden. Just as a to break things up, a bit of different colour. Um, to uh, you know, a lot of exotics are just green, so. Nice to have some um, different colours. This is a Choicea uh, White Dazzler, £9. Looks quite nice. Look at that sort of delicate, almost palmate f uh, foliage. And the white flowers look great as well. So, has year round interest apparently, which is good. And it flowers in spring summer, autumn. I'm not sure, quite sure what that means. Does it flower once in spring and once in autumn perhaps? You have to let me know because if that does, if that flowers from spring till autumn then that's the plant for me. I'm going to come back and buy that so let me know. Okay we've got some uh, aces, some Japanese maples here. These aren't cheap at £26. And they're not particularly big either. Um, you know what I said about buying a plant as soon as it comes in? Before it is left out in the frost. That's what's happened there, I think. Uh, we've got some climbing plants here, which aren't... I'm not really into climbing plants. This is a red robin. Um, at £45, because it's a a big old thing. The other thing about red robin is you can prune it quite well so you could you could keep it as a small plant if you wanted. You could make it into a big round bush or um, you could let it go tall like that. Here we have a very spiky looking plant but there's no label. So I can't really Thing about that, unfortunately. Okay, cheap, cheap strawberries. Thing with strawberries, if you see a flower, that's a very good sign. Means you're very likely to get strawberries this year. Some roses down here. Random quarter line dotted about. Someone's obviously changed their mind about that, which is a shame. What have we got here? Oh, we've got some um, some some plants that flower year after year. So we've got some hostas. I would like to to try some hostas. I had some before, but um, suffered they suffered really badly with slug damage. Um, these are some lilies. I haven't got a bigger section of lilies. Maybe, maybe they've been and gone. This plant here is interesting. Um, a hybrid peony. And again, uh, why it's interesting to me is because the, the foliage, the leaf sort of structure is, is really different and exotic, in my opinion, exotic looking. Um, but at £24, not cheap.
some Bookers black lace. £12 for that, again, very similar and interesting leaf structure. And the colour as well just, you know, would really break up the, the mass of green that it's easy to have in a, an evergreen, uh, sorry, in an exotic garden, which is, of course, mostly evergreen. Clearance, I've had some bargains here before. Nothing that takes my fancy though, unfortunately. I don't think today. Yeah, some of these plants I think have um, perhaps caught a late frost we've had here in Blackburn. They look okay, don't they? They could be interesting. They haven't been um, damaged. However, they're not actually on clearance. They're full price. Then just one aisle left, you'll be pleased to know. Oh, look at these, these are nice. Aren't they? These are Sonetti Magenta Bicolor, of course. Six pounds seems reasonable, doesn't it? They flower all summer long, so exactly what I'm after. The only thing is, I don't believe they flower year after year, so you're, they're bedding, essentially. And to give you an idea of what just one looks like, because obviously that's a massive colour, just one, you know, gives a good, a good display. But, um, better, you know, not so good from the side. So not so good in planters, probably better in the border where you're looking down on them. Always important to um, consider that when buying plants. Here we have some herbs. Might be interesting for, an ex uh, in, for a Mediterranean style garden. And that is that, I believe. Yep. We've looked at all that. They've got a massive range of pots out here. And as we noticed in B&M, grey is definitely in. It wasn't B&M, it was in Bargains, wasn't it, last time? It's a huge grey section. Quite a lot of terracotta here as well, as well as some blue, which people like. Some people like. These are quite interesting, aren't these? These are £36. You can hear that, and um, yeah, that's that's nice looking. That, but I do find myself drawn to the the grey pots, and in particular, the plastic ones, which are a lot cheaper. So you've got these sort of ones that look um, like they're some fancy stone. Uh, they're not. They're plastic. And yeah, much cheaper look at the price difference. These ones are very interesting, the size of them. They're 67 pounds. These are plastic too. <laughs> look at the size of them. They're absolutely huge. So yeah, that's it for uh, here. That's it, it from here at B&Q. Uh, a little bit disappointed with the amount of exotic plants on show today. However, it's only late April, so maybe there's going to be some for next weekend, which is the May Day Bank Holiday weekend. Now, let's have a look at what's going on in my garden at home. Back home now. All in all, a little bit disappointing, I think at B&Q today. However, hopefully they will have some more plants in soon. I will probably head back um, maybe in June. We've still got some tulips looking pretty nice in the raised bed. 
these uh, pink ones have are past the best. And the garden's just starting to come alive. So really exciting time of the year. Starting to see some flowers which I didn't know were there. So I don't know if that's, maybe I did plant them there. I've forgotten about them. It's probably what happened actually. But um, it's a nice surprise anyway, just to see the garden come back into life. This isn't bamboo growing out of the grass. This isn't an example of the running bamboo. This is uh, a comb that was uh, growing at a funny angle. So I just cut it off and temporarily used it along with this one as a goalpost. The apple tree, the least exotic thing in the garden, but it is starting to come into blossom now. So you can see here, there's a well-developed group of flowers and most of the others are sort of in the budding stage. So in a few days, they will be at peak, although there are you know, the further you look into it, the least, you know, the less there are some that are developed. Look at these, uh, I mean, they're tiny. So uh, maybe next weekend it'll look its best. We are due to get some nice weather this week, so that should hurry it along. And we've also got these tulips here in the play area, in a forgotten about pot. Is it all tulips? Yes, it is all tulips looking good in the garden currently, but there will be more diverse things to come. Okay, thank you very much for watching, if indeed you still are.